Hello everybody and welcome to this first video tutorial about the micro game engine. This tutorial is going to be about creating a Zelda-like exploration game in the micro game engine and it's going to show off the various features that the game engine has, at least some of them. Remember that you can find the documentation for the game engine at gabe.software slash mge slash docs uh, with a capital D and uh, well the link is going to be in the description so don't worry about that. At the moment we have the standard micro game engine base scene open and uh, yeah we're just gonna start by customizing the looks of it. I decided to go on the open game art website and located this nice NES thingy here. I'm just gonna put it into the resources folder of the game engine and save. Once it's done we can close this down and go into paint. In the resources folder we can now locate this image. I'm just gonna right click it and open it with paint.net. First I want to get the grass so I'm just gonna cut a 16 by 16 tile as you can see here at the bottom. I'm just gonna Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl Alt V to paste into a new thing. And I can save this with Ctrl S in here and I'm, as a bitmap overlaying the previous one. Yes. Okay, I'm also gonna get this other one, which I think is really nice. Copying Ctrl Alt V, Ctrl S as a bitmap, S2. And this is gonna be what we use as our boundaries. That's pretty nice. So let's throw it into the engine. I start with level zero. I'm gonna open this one. And this is already pretty good, although I don't have a player, so I should actually remove this with my pencil. Right click it for white and save this again. In the resources folder, the entities database is where our sprites are gonna be matched to colors. So if we go here, we can see that 64, 64, 64, which is a light gray, is gonna be our wall and it's gonna be associated with sprite 2. Well, 255, 255, 255 being white is going to be associated with grass, sprite 1. Now, these are the names of the game objects that are going to be created. These are going to be the number of the sprite that they're going to be associated with. And this is the color that they're going to be looking for into the level. If we go in the game engine and we start it, we see that the game now has the sprites how we want them. I'm now going to do the same for the trees, the rupee and the character. But the character, being an animation, is gonna have to be in a strip. So each of the character's sprites are gonna be 16 tall and 32 wide, so that the animation can go between the two frames. What I'm also gonna be doing is that for every transparent sprite, I'm gonna be filling up the transparent bits with this color, which is 2550255, to signify to the engine that this is gonna be a transparent area. After you gather all your sprites, you should have something like this in your resources folders. I decided to have sprite 0 being the rupee, sprite 4, 5, 6 and 7 being the animations, and 1, 2 and 3 being the background elements. Now let's place them into the level. So again, we're going to be dragging this in, just going to open it up, zoom in and start painting our level. Something to keep in mind is that we need to remember which color we are assigning to each of the entities. I'm gonna make the trees blue, the rupees red and the player green. Finally, I'll just save this. Back to my entities database, I need to fill this up. I decided to start the player looking down and finally completed all the other entities as well. And save this. Opening up the game is gonna be looking now more interesting. As you can see, we have a little problem. There is no grass behind the entities that we created because of course, if there is an entity that can't be another one in the same place, we're gonna fix this in the code later on, but for now, it looks pretty nice. So let's start writing some code. Into the resources folder, we're gonna be opening up the game.lua file. In here, I already made a function that will fill the empty spots with grass. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking for each of the entities in the scene. Scene is a global variable that we have access to from the game engine. We're gonna find out if they are called rupee or player, which we have defined in the entities database. We're gonna set their draw order to one, which means that they're gonna be drawn on top of everything that doesn't have a draw order of one, namely every new game entity. And then we're gonna be adding a new grass entity, 
with a sprite of one color black it's okay at the x and y positions of the entity that we are finding what this is gonna do is that it's gonna drop a grass entity on top of the rupees and the player but at the same time it's gonna set the draw order of the rupee and the player to one which means that they're gonna be drawn on top let's see what it looks like and voila we have our entities here drawn on top of all the grass that we just generated we are now gonna take care of the player movement we're gonna first identify our player so let's create a variable that's gonna hold a reference to our player and after filling in the grass we're gonna use the find entity method to find our player this name has been defined of course in the entity database we're gonna then set the speed vertical speed and horizontal speed of the player speed is what we're gonna be using for movement if we are holding up we're gonna be decreasing our vertical speed if we're holding down down we're gonna be increasing the vertical speed right and left are gonna be doing the same with the horizontal speed and at the end of it all we're just gonna call the move function on the player for the horizontal speed and vertical speed as parameters. Now let's look at what it looks like in the engine. So we now can move left, right, up and down, but there is no collision and at the same time the animation is only one. Animation is simple, we just set up the sprite of the player according to the one we have in our resources folder to match the movement. So if the vertical speed is larger than zero, we're going down and we're set our sprite to six and the same goes for all the other animations. We also add a little bit of code here that makes sure that if the player is not moving, then we are not animating it. And this looks like this, stopped. But if we're moving, there's gonna be a very slow animation. To fix the slow animation problem, we just set up on start that the animation speed of the player should be equal to 4 instead of 1. In game, it looks like this. Collisions with walls and trees are fairly simple to implement. We're just gonna go through all the colliders in the scene, and if the name of that particular entity is either wall or tree, then we're gonna test the collision given our horizontal and vertical speeds with that specific entity. And if that happens, then we're gonna be moving the player back by h speed and v speed, thus returning it to the previous position. And this is what it looks like in the engine. Boop, boop. We can note that the player is still working because the animation is still going. If I let go of the key, the player will stop moving. By adding an else if to check if the collider is a rupee, we can then check for that collision and remove the entity. So this is gonna make the rupee be collected. We can add a variable to note that and we can also play a sound, which is something that we're gonna be doing later on. We can finally add a small check to see if we cannot find any rupee entities and if that's so then we got them all so we log it and then we quit the game there we go last but not least i'm gonna add a small sound for whenever the rupees are collected this will do fine and we're just gonna be exporting it as a WAV file in our engine and we call it A0. And we can add the play sound 0 here after a rupee collision happens. And this is what it's gonna sound like in the engine. To conclude our journey, we can just go back to the desktop, rename this to Zelda like, and we are done. This is our game made. Hope you enjoyed this small tutorial about making a Zelda like game in this engine. And if you did like it, stay tuned because more tutorials are gonna be up and running soon. Thank you very much for watching.